Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I have another art trade for you, and this time I collaborated with the amazing Colorful Janine on Instagram. She responded to the same post I put out a few months ago at this point to see who would be willing to do an art trade with me. And it was for a YouTube art trade, but she, I don't believe she's making a YouTube video and I told her, you know, that's okay. We've been friends for quite some time. I just want to do an art trade with you. So even like little pictures of your process or little videos of your process, that would be okay with me. So she's going to do one of those, though she has been dropping a lot of hints and it looks absolutely amazing. I can't wait to see the finished product and the theme for our art trade was actually chosen by her. That was The Last Unicorn. I've seen this movie quite a few times, not recently, but quite a few times. I don't know that I've actually drawn her before though, or any of the characters really. So this was a lot of fun. I've always loved her colors, her light, very, very light blonde gray hair and I kind of changed the colors up a little bit in this but you'll have to wait a few more minutes to see that this was also a special art trade because she lost her grandmother and her grandmother's the one that introduced this video and show to her so it's kind of a tribute piece as well so that made it extra special for this art trade for the background I did a bit of an ombre with the green at the bottom and then a light blue and then a darker blue because I wanted it to look like the daytime because we broke it down into two times and two outfits because she wears essentially two and she did a nighttime with the cloak she uses once she immediately turns human and I chose the daytime with the lavender dress. And so we broke it down that way. And I really, really, really wanted to do a dark blue background. And I actually looked up stills from the movie and pictures and fan art to see what kind of background looks good. Because I knew a dark blue background was out of the question because it looks more like the nighttime. So I searched for it and I finally settled on this one and then I did something I haven't done in a long, long time and that is get out my Colorless Blender Copic ink, pour it into the lid, grab a paintbrush and paint circles and it gives this really cool effect and I probably haven't done this in years. And I just thought, you know, it's a cool effect. It'll add something. I don't have to worry about it being perfectly flat because this will push the color around anyways and I like how it looks. So it was a win all the way around and I decided to do that even though it is a little iffy doing that technique sometimes because how the ink gets pushed around it went into the parts that were still white and we're going to remain white because of the hair and the body of the unicorn. But it worked out in the end. I had to use a little bit of gel pen, but not too much. So it was definitely worth it. And I did a simple floral kind of frame. I wanted to do something more extravagant and kind of like moocha. But I decided on this just for time's sake. And... It still looked really boring with just the outline. So I decided to pull my Faber Castell Gold Faber color pencils out. They're pretty much the only color pencils I use. I have Prisma color pencils, but I don't know. I like these better for some reason. And I decided to outline them, and it still looked too plain like there wasn't enough there so I went in with a middle vine that kind of wrapped back and forth again a little too plain still 
So I added little curly cues on them, and I think that that helped with the background a lot, at least for the border. And instead of just outlining the outside of the leaf, I decided to make a wavy, it's not really swirly, I guess it's a wavy line inside the leaf as well. And I've I've missed doing these little details. I just finished Mermaid out of season <laughs> four months late, but I did finish. That's, that's what I'm sticking with. And for that, all I did for the background was a simple rectangle. I didn't do anything else. I didn't do little details for the background. I did a lot of details inside the mermaid design because some of those mermaids were just overloaded with detail but I didn't get to do a lot of detailing in the background or with color pencils though I suppose I could have but definitely during the second half of mermaid I wanted to keep it simple and not do a lot of detail so this was the perfect entrance back into the detailed world for the unicorn and for Lady Amalthea I kind of struggled a little bit because there was so much white that I was going to have to color in, but I didn't want to color it with grays. That would be super boring and not magical at all. But I think in the movie, I was watching the movie while coloring this so I could just look over and see what colors I needed. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> but uh, the hair was probably the trickiest, the body not so much. But the hair was probably the trickiest and that if I colored them exactly the same, they would blend in and you couldn't tell whose was whose. So for the unicorn version or yeah, unicorn version of her, I decided to overlay all of her hair with N0, which is neutral gray, zero. That way there's a different base color instead of just the white. And then for her hair on the human version, I underlaid it with warm gray. Yeah, warm gray one. And I think that helped with that distinction between the two. And shading was a little tricky at first because I used practically all my pastel colors. I used B, zero 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 bv zero 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 and then v zero 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 so all the zero zero zeros in violet purple and blue and i wanted a little bit more shading or blending on most of them so i i use the colorless blender but not too terribly much i think mostly i use that on the unicorn's body instead of the hair and what else? Shading was a little bit tricky because I was using all the light colors. So I went over with that base color again. So at the very end, I used N0 to go over and push the shadow just a little bit more. And I really love how it turned out. I was tempted to shade something darker, but I held back and I still might go back with it, but I haven't quite decided yet. It's a very tricky thing trying to shade something so incredibly light because if you do it too dark it looks completely different and that's not what I was going for. So I had to hold back. <laughs> um. And while I am finishing up coloring the rest of the unicorn version and her hair. I will talk a little bit about the movie since this process is just repeating itself and there's nothing really more to say about that part of it until I get to the dress. So this movie, if you have not seen it, is forever old. Uh, let me look up when exactly it came out. I think it was 1982. If I remember correctly, when I was looking it up yesterday, 
because unfortunately I don't have this on yeah 1982 is when it came out I don't have it on DVD which I desperately need it on DVD <laughs> and while watching well listening to it I guess I was coloring while I was watching it quote unquote <laughs> and I forgot a couple things about it I forgot how awful the music sounds it just it sounds old like I don't know if you can understand that but it sounds old like it's playing through something <laughs> I know I'm not describing that right but you'll just have to listen to it and there was a lot more language in it that I remember especially for a cartoon and it was scarier that I remember so my nieces and nephew will not be watching this until they're older because they will have nightmares and then I will get in trouble because they're having nightmares <laughs> that harpy is terrifying the bull um, all the clashes in it the tree was a little she a little spicy that tree was a little spicy she's like we're going down together <laughs> very dramatic but I I do love that movie I want to draw uh, Malfia and Prince Lear together because again I don't think I've ever drawn these characters somehow and it's such a wonderful movie so I don't I don't know how I've not drawn them before now uh, a little bit back on the picture since I'm coloring something different her skin I used three different colors a lot lighter than I normally do because she's very pale and the colors I used were E000 again with those zeros E00 and then E70 for the shadow normally I do a purple shadow but I decided I wanted something a bit paler since there's already a lot of purple in here with her hair and her dress and her eyes and there's just a lot of purple so I decided to go in with slightly different color than I usually do for shading and for her dress using those same colors I used BV oh goodness I think zero zero BV 31 for the little ruffles at the top trying to look at my Copics and see if any of them ring a bell. I think it was BV00, BV01, and then B00, just to have that little splash of blue still in there, kind of tying it all together. I have found that when drawing cool colors or coloring with cool colors, I like to shade with blue. And then when uh, coloring with warm colors I like to color with or shade with purple just because the complementary color with the yellow and the purple I guess technically I could shade with blue as well because of the orange but I'll have to try that out on a different picture <laughs> her dress was a lot of fun to color I colored it in sections so that it would blend nicely and I left off a few details on her dress, like the buttons that go up the front of it. I just liked how this looked more. So the buttons can be on the back of the dress in this dress instead of the front of the dress. And coloring it even in sections was a little difficult. I think I had to refill this marker. Thankfully, I looked. I knew there was a huge section I would be coloring, so I definitely looked. To see which marker I was going to use based on what refill I have because I thought about using BV31 as the dress color because I think it fit a little bit better but I didn't have the refill for it so I was like you know what nope we're going with BV00 and that's just gonna have to do because I don't have the refill for the other one but it worked out in the end I definitely love coloring these types of dresses and doing the different folds and 
The light color was a challenge, like everything else in this picture, but I definitely enjoy how it turned out. And to give it a little bit more magic, I decided to sparkle the crap out of it <laughs> and add it with the Posca pen first because that was going to help with the bigger dots and then going in not extremely finely detailing it with the smaller dots just to add that contrast between the sparkles and once I got started on the sparkles I decided to add some lines to the leaves on the background just on one side of them not on both and do a few dots not too many on the background ombre effect thing <laughs> And that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so, so much for doing an art trade with me. It was so much fun. I hope that we will be able to do an art trade again in the future sometime. And I hope all the well wishes for your family during this time. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!